Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Come on, hit some flies. I'm trying. I think the ball's too small for the bat. Now aim some at me. Flames! I'm lucky if I hit him at all. I'm up! See how you do. All right. Pitch me one, Porky. <laughs> well, that ain't exactly like Babe Bruce. I can't hit them all. Well, neither could the Babe. Take another cut at it now. Hey, you're off balance here. Let me show you. Let's get the feel of it, see? Swing from the hips and make a level cut of the ball. Oh, I see. All right, Porky, throw me a couple. Are you a knuckleball artist or a speed merchant? I just close my eyes and let go. If I'm lucky, the ball gets to the plate. That's the kind of a pitcher I like. Now, don't try to kill the ball, see? Just make a solid connection there. All right, Porky. Well, uh, form counts, you know, uh, whether you hit the ball or not. Uh, but that ball was a little low. Let's have another, Porky. Nothing. Nothing. You sure? You fellas, go on and play. I got things to do. Can I have some more soup, Mom? Gee, it's good. Boy, Gramps, you sure can't sock a ball. Who's showing Porky and me how to bat this morning? You don't feel well. There's nothing wrong with me. You got that pain in your chest again? I tell you, I'm all right. I know. That's what you tell me. You look kind of sickish after you hit the ball this morning. Are you sure you're okay? Mm-hmm. So you've had that pain since this morning? Nothing of the sort. I tell you, a man of your age just can't and I shouldn't try to do the things that a youngster does. Oh, you're making a forest out of a... out of a sapling. All right. You feel fine, but please now do me a favor and, and go to bed right now. Just try to pretend that you're tired and need some rest. All right, all right. I'll go to bed just so you'll stop nagging me about being sick. Why, well, I never had a sick day in my life. Well, I mean, uh, almost never. <laughs> That's better. I'll bring you some warm milk. Oh. Mom, do you think Gramps is really sick? Jeff, dear, do you remember asking me to buy you some new fishing line? Well, the old line was all right, but it had been used a long time and just might not have stood up under extra strains. Well, Gramps has used his body muscles a long time, and, and they're still all right, too, but... Oh, unless he, you know, puts too much strain on them, and then they, well, they kind of protest. Do you understand? Mm, I guess so. Now, we both know that Gramps has a, a young spirit and an old body, and it's, it's up to us to see to it that he doesn't forget and kick up his heels too much. Oh, I know what you mean, Mom. Good. Now, do you think you could force yourself to eat some cherry pie? One piece or the whole pie? <laughs> One piece, mister. 
after you finish your soup and your salad. I'll go warm Gramps' milk for him. Find him? No, Mom. Did you look at the barn? And the tool shed, and the garden, and the pasture. How about his bedroom? Now, what would Gramps be doing in his bedroom at this time of morning? Take a look anyway. Sure. Don't eat your breakfast standing up. You still in bed? <laughs> well, where does it look like I am? Oh, come. Don't you feel good or something? Mom's got breakfast already. Me and Lassie have been looking all over for you. Well, <coughs> you tell her I'll be right down. Just get my clothes on. Look, Gramps, if you don't feel too good or something, Mom will bring you breakfast in bed like she does with me when I'm sick. <coughs> well, I ain't even sick. Just felt a little tired this morning, that's all. What's wrong with that? Breakfast in bed. Go on now, I'll be right down. Gramps is in bed. In bed? He's dressed and he'll be right there. Well, is he all right? He says he is. Why should he be especially tired this morning? He went to bed early last night. Hello, uh, Jenny, uh, Ellen Miller. Get me Dr. Stewart, please. Oh, no, nothing serious, dear. Dad's a little out of the weather. He says he isn't sick. I know. Well, he's not gonna like this. He hates having the doctor. Well, let him hate it all he wants. Oh, uh, hello, Dr. Stewart, Ellen Miller. Uh, no, I'm fine, but uh, I would like you to stop by and see Dad. Well, he won't admit anything's wrong, but I know his chest is bothering him again. All right, thanks. Well, we'll see you in a little while. Goodbye. You gonna tell Gramps the doctor's coming? I don't know. I haven't planned my strategy yet. But I shouldn't say anything and pretend nothing's happened, huh? Nothing. Morning, Ellen. Morning. How you feel? Fine. Same as I always feel. Breakfast ready? Two minutes. Well, I'll go collect the eggs. Oh, Jeff can do that. Go on, Jeff. Oh, sure. You come on and sit down. I'll bring you a cup of coffee. Listen, you call me. I'll be in the bar. Oh, isn't that silly? By the time you get there, I'll be ready. Well, all you got to do is sing out. Won't take me a moment to get back from the bar. Oh, can... Dad, uh, the new Grange magazine arrived. Uh, I'll read it tonight. Oh, you know that letter that you wrote to the editor? Yes. Yeah. It was printed. Well, you know, I kind of figured it would be. About time that magazine printed something with some sense in it. Uh, uh, where is it? In the parlor. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll read it tonight after supper when I have more time to concentrate. Uh, right now, I gotta get them apple crates out. There was also a letter by a man from Greenville. Yes. Said you're an old fuddy-duddy who doesn't appreciate modern farming. What do you mean I don't appreciate modern farming? Fuddy-duddy? Why, well, I've been rotating crops and farming scientifically for 40 years. Well, don't bark at me. I, I, I'm just telling you what the letter said. It's in the parlor? Uh-huh. Must be that same pipsqueak that wrote the article. College farmer, huh? Plants a crop of geraniums in a clay pot and calls himself an expert. Why, he wouldn't know a real farm even if he saw one. Ah. Feel better. Nothing like a good breakfast to set a man up. More toast? No, I gotta get busy with them apple crates. Oh, did Jeff can do it? Sure. Why don't you finish that letter to the Grange magazine? Time enough for that tonight. Huh? I'd like another cup of coffee. <laughs> Keep me company. You know how I hate to eat alone. Look, you've had three cups already. Let Jeff sit with you. Oh, I can't. I promised Forky I'd meet him. Bye. Well, what's good into him? Children have too much energy. Yeah, well, you relax. I got things to do. Dad. Huh? I've called Dr. Stewart, and he should be here any minute. Oh, well, goodness, who's sick? I hope no one, but I want him to examine you. Now, look here, Ellen. You had no call to do that. I ought to know whether I need a doctor or not. Humor me. I'll just feel easier if the doctor says you're all right. This is all nonsense. Now, when he comes, you tell him to turn around and go right straight back. He's here. You tell him. Now, uh, see here, Ellen, there's no reason for me to have an examination, and I won't do it. Hi, Ellen. George? Good morning. What did I hear when I was coming here, George? You don't want to be examined? That's what you heard. Well, you made your point. Now let's go in the other room, and you take off your shirt, huh? Nothing doing. And don't try to treat me like a baby, either. Why not? You're acting like one. In fact, you're acting worse. Now, look here, Walter. I tell you that You I... tell me nothing. I tell you. I'm going to examine you whether you squawk or not. 
And I haven't got time to listen to you sounding off. Come on now, let's go. You go and peddle your pills to someone who needs them. I won't cooperate. What'd you say you call that gadget? Electrocardiogram. Now what's it supposed to do? Diagnostic aid. How does it work? Ordinarily, the impulse which stimulates the auricles and ventricles originates in the sinoauricular node. It then spreads over each auricle to reach the auricular ventricle node. See? Yeah. Come on now. Snap out of it. In the first place, we aren't sure it's serious. And in the second place, even if it is a heart condition, no reason to hang crepe. With the proper care and a slowdown in activities, you get along fine for years. Somehow I forget that he's old and, you know, liable to be ill. Yeah, so does he. Just keep him off his feet now. That's important. I'll try. And don't worry. Thanks, Doctor. I'll be by tomorrow. What are you doing up? Now, look here, Ellen. Look, you're nothing. You get back to bed right now. Well, I'm hungry. I'll bring you something to eat in bed. Eating in beds for invalids, which I ain't. Bed right now. Understand? I ain't going to bed. You All I said I could stay on the parlor sofa. I saw the doctor drive away. How's Gramps? We don't know yet, Jeff. Maybe nothing or, or it may be serious. Gosh. The main thing is to keep Gramps off his feet. And that's got me worried. He sure hates to stay in bed. But you can't blame him. It's not much fun. Be a lot less fun. Seriously ill. Come on, Lassie. I'm going to teach you a new trick. Now, Lassie, listen to me. I'm going to teach you a new trick. Now, watch. I'm lying down. Now, when I sit up, I want you to speak. That's a good girl. All right, now we'll do it again. I'm lying down again. Ready? Good. Hi, Gramps. Hi. How you feeling? Too good to be on my back. If it wasn't for that blasted doctor, I could do anything. You mean you could sit up now, just like you weren't sick. I tell you, I ain't sick. I don't know. Stay, Lassie. See you later, Gramps. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, Jeff, get her out of here. Get her out now. I don't want her near me, do you hear? Go on, get out. Beat it. Come on. I don't want you here. You... So that's it. You double cross and four legged stool pigeon, you. Go to Jeff, Lassie. That's a good girl. Go to Jeff. That's a nice girl. How long have I got to lay around here doing nothing? As long as the doctor says it's necessary. 
Can you get them apple crates down? Tomorrow. Well, I got two hired men coming to pick apples tomorrow. And where are they going to put them? Answer me that. Oh, by the time the crates are needed, Jeff and I'll have them ready. Oh, I'm tired, Mom. I'm going to bed. Oh, what a lovely idea. Me too. You were a terrific helper today. Matter of fact, you did more than I did. I guess I might as well go to bed. <coughs> Must be one thing laying here. <coughs> now look, I'm going to bed. You hear? And you ain't going to stop me either. <coughs> it's all right, Lassie. Come on. Good night, everybody. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. I gotta get some water, then I'll go to bed. Oh, well, I'll get it for you. No, no, I can get it myself. Wait a minute now. It's all right. All right. Don't forget to turn out the lights. Well, Doctor? You got a pretty rugged grandfather, Jeff. Is he all right? Fine. I didn't get a chance to tell you when I came in, but the electrocardiogram I took yesterday was normal. Nothing wrong with his heart. He must have strained one of the intercostal muscles on the left side of his chest when he tried to show Jeff how to bat a baseball. Tonight, reaching for the apple crates, he really gave it a wrench. Pain evidently frightened him, and he just passed out. He'll have to stay in bed, though, or those muscles won't heal. No couch in the parlor, bed flat on his back. 
Did you tell him that? I did. What did he say? What do you think he said? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Good night, Ellen. Good night, Jeff. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. Thanks a lot. Glad Gramps is gonna be all right. Oh, so am I, dear. Get out of here. Get out of here. What's going on up there? Gramps is sitting up. Get out. What Get out of here. You hear me? What's the matter? She's the four-footed stool pigeon. And he put her up to it. I told Lassie to bark every time Gramps sits up. Because Gramps isn't supposed to sit up. I won't have it. Get her out of here. I won't be spied on. Will you promise not to sit up? <laughs> oh, yes, I will. I'll do anything to get rid of that infernal noise. Good girl, Lassie. Now kiss Gramps. <laughs>